Notice too that I'm cutting these off as close as possible to the log so there's no bits of stump sticking out there because anything you leave outside the log just like the blue oysters you're going to uh, get prone to it molding up now there's a reason too why you see that I've moved these shelves over here my other side of the basement it's because you can tell that doing this in a cramped space is not fun especially when you get to this bottom shelf you have mushrooms growing up underneath of it towards the back I was all the way back in the corner there trying to get around things and it was just a pain but I'm thinking I'm going to reinforce the floor over there make it flat with more concrete that way I can have another flat area that I can use these shelves and scoot scoot them in and out because you see I have little floor mover pads on the bottom those really help you can have a lot of weight on the shelf and it'll still be able to manipulate it now again here's one that's a bit trapped so I'm going to Try to maneuver it out. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna have a. You're gonna have a mess of uh, bits of mushrooms on the floor. Here's how to sweep up and hose down the floor later. When you get done. Uh, here's the one that actually kind of grew around the uh, shelving. So probably to get that out, I'm going to have to actually cut it in the half and half. Slice it there and slice it where it meets. And I'll pop the bottom down when I start harvesting the mushrooms below it. So you can see this kind of gets like a puzzle game. Especially when you get a large amount of mushrooms in one spot that you have to get the knife in there tight because you don't want to slice your mushrooms up. You don't want to stab them up. They'll keep much better if they are as uh, undamaged as possible. I'm just going to go ahead and pick all these little suckers off. Now this log I don't see a whole lot of mold problems. I see a couple little tiny spots that will that'll grow and be a problem from ever trying a third flush, but I'll be able to get a second flush out of this log, I'm pretty sure. See one right there. And now I can free that one up. Now I can get this guy out. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, not too bad. He's a little beat up. He's fine. And that one, I too, will... You can see there's actually a whole cluster that was growing out of the bottom here that's sandwiched between the mushrooms below. That's why I think I'm going to really like the idea of doing these logs where I flattened everything out and gave more clearance something really necessary. Either that or I get taller shelves and only put three logs a shelf. But that wouldn't be maximizing my space. You can always double check and see if you got any uh, plastic. The worst thing I think would be for the chef to miss it end up with a container of other chopped mushrooms or whatever and into the frying pan. Now sometimes you'll find a mushroom that made it. You can see see how squishy that is. It feels like it's almost hollow in the inside. You can that's not nearly 
It'll be all the good ones will be nice and hard and firm, like a hard piece of rubber. But this, you know, I can indent it. You don't want to sell that because it's just going to go bad quick. Once the tissue starts to die off, because when you put these in the fridge, you might think that, well, I've chopped off the log, you know, it's dead. Nope. They will actually try to regrow in the fridge if you haven't gotten the outsides dry enough to prevent any regrowth and you don't uh, provide enough fresh air exchange. You know, piling them all into a box too tight where the carbon dioxide builds up and it senses that it's in a underground vegetative kind of growth state again. Looks like I'm probably going to get about four of these shelves, maybe three and a half, full of these today. Of course, Depending on how big your mushrooms are, depends on how many pounds per shelf you're going to get. Because, you know, I'm, I'm putting it on these shelves so we can dry them out and reduce the moisture content. Now, if we had a situation like a most commercial mushrooms farms have, where when you're growing mushrooms, you do it in a large batch. And an entire room fruits all at the same time. And that way you can control things because you're doing everything in such large volume to uh, just one grow space. So say uh, I wanted to harvest everything at the same time, I could reduce the humidity down in the basement. And I wouldn't have to set these in front of the fan. They would be perfectly dry at the point I want them. And you can just box them up right then and there. And that's a lot of times the situation for me too in the winter because the air I'm bringing in is so dry that you have to constantly mist or at least keep up misting twice a day along with the palm fogger. And they'll still end up pretty dry on the outside. So you can see I'm going to work for the open so space area to the cluster. Try to get inside. It's always a bit more advantageous too to try to cut uh, from the underside of the mushroom upward if you can. another shelf. Alright, last shelf's worth. And if I have more, I'm just going to pile it up on there and make space with the other shelves upstairs. You want to be very careful when you're pulling these out that are up against the top of another shelf because you'll be real prone to scraping it. Now you can see these two came from two different logs and they've actually fused together like one gigantic mushroom mass. If you look real close, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little bit of white fuzziness in between where the mycelium has recovered. Ooh. Well, I tried. That's another, that's another reason why more space is good. Well, that was about as best as I could get it. Took a pretty gigantic mushroom and roughed it up. Nice, isn't it? But, it'll still go into the skillet. A waste on that. Now, of course, I never had too many problems with mushrooms getting sandwiched between shelves when I was doing 
alfalfa and straw or just plain straw because the mushrooms wouldn't get so gigantic. But now that since I've switched to doing the cotton seed hauls, I've been very happy. Except for, you know, the obvious issue where they become more prone to overheating. But we'll solve that problem. Air conditioner I received from eBay today was broken, so I gotta send it back and have them give me another one. So in the meantime, I have the AC from the house. A house vent opened up and blowing down here. And it's doing not too bad. It's keeping it about 67. It's pretty warm outside. But I really want it 65 or lower. Because I can tell some, even some of these uh, flat logs have some metabolite growing in them. Another issue too I'm going to try to solve I'm going to use some of the buckets that I was growing the king oysters and blue oysters in. They had the holes drilled into them. I'm going to drill some holes on the bottom of those and kind of make like a press and press out some of this excess water that's in these cotton seed hulls because I always notice that one log is worse than the other and that's because it's the log I make with the cotton seed hulls that I've placed in the bins and those ones don't drain as well as the the hauls that I've had drying out for about three hours on the table. So I want to get even the stuff on the table a little bit drier because the all that excess water is really unnecessary. You won't lose hardly anything on yields from reducing the water content to a point of course but I've I've soaked uh, logs and other different styles of doing it in water ahead of time before they even fruited at all so until you know super saturated after it was fully colonized and they still produce the same yield as ones that I didn't soak at all. So. There, is, there is a maximum. The usual ratio that's good, the amount of water in the soil, is usually described as field capacity. And field, capa field capacity is basically when you can take a handful of the material, squeeze it in your hand a little tight, and a little bit of water streams out to show you that it's wet, but then it stops, uh, the stream ends quick, and it drips for a couple of seconds, and then stops dripping. And that's when you know that you have a really good moisture content that'll favor mushroom growth over any other contaminations. Start stacking some on top, but I'll even things out later. This one, you remember, got to pop through. There we go. Attack this big old cluster right here. I think it's all coming from about the same hole. Try not to, when you're having to really cut through stuff. Try not to uh, cut yourself for one and don't shake the log so much that it rolls and damages mushrooms that are in between the shelving. So you might have to do a quite a bit of sawing to get this big cluster off. Sometimes too it's beneficial to saw about two thirds of the way and break, break the rest off because a lot of times it's just on there because you've cut through the plastic some and it's hung up around the stump. 